Today, we're going to show you how to take positive steps right now in your community to make our streams and waterways cleaner and healthier. The proliferation of hard surfaces such as roads, parking lots, and rooftops creates problems for streams and waterways. When it rains, too much water washes off these surfaces too quickly, carrying with it a variety of pollutants to these waterways. This leads to degraded habitat and lack of clean water. And as more areas have developed, these problems have gotten worse. So what can be done to make our streams and waterways cleaner and healthier in our communities? One example is stormwater retrofitting. Stormwater retrofitting explores the way that water runs across our developed landscape and investigates how we can construct practices that intercept, slow down, and treat the stormwater runoff before it reaches our streams and waterways. Here on this high school campus, there are two great examples of stormwater retrofitting, bioretention and rainwater harvesting. We recently spoke with Dan Frisbee, who has been instrumental in the development and implementation of water protection practices. So Dan, tell us more about this bioretention system. Well, this bioretention system, um, also referred to as a biofilter or even a rain garden, a smaller residential application, is a landscaped engineered practice that we've put in place here so that stormwater that falls on this big expanse of parking lot up here, about four acres of it, mm actually comes and drains into this depressional area now. Water is allowed to pond on its surface a little bit and then slowly soak down through this engineered layer of soil. This is a mix of sand and topsoil and compost. There's a layer of gravel down at the bottom as well that's designed to be able to take that storm water, slowly soak it into the ground. This allows the water to soak through the engineered soil pollutants are removed, and the water is sent to the stream much cleaner than if it hadn't gone through this system. Of course, it's not just parking lots that create excessive runoff. Large rooftops are also an example of impervious cover. Let's see what Dan and Dave are up to. Dan, we find ourselves on top of this huge <laughs> roof. This is, is massive. It's pretty vast, isn't it? I mean, it we're is. talking about acres of rooftop up here. Acres? Acres. What happens to the water? For the most part, it's running into these drains down through the sides of the buildings and shooting straight through the stormwater system to our little uh, creek that runs back behind the school here. Okay, so Dan, what are some of the options? So in this case, well, there's a practice ball field down on the side of the school. It's got an irrigation system. We were using municipal treated potable water to irrigate that field. So let me get this straight. You were taking drinking water and spraying it on a sports field. Yep. Not very efficient. It's a widespread practice, but we're trying to take a little more enlightened view. Use rainwater. We're catching it on this roof. All we've got to do is send it down to a tank system, send that through the irrigation system, and saving a lot of potable water in the process. So this stormwater retrofit, called rainwater harvesting, diverts rainwater into the design drainage system and down to collection tanks. It is a great example of a better way to use our water resources. It helps conserve drinking water supplies as it is used to irrigate this athletic field instead of relying solely on the public water supply. Hey, watch out, guys. Oh, Jim, Merry Christmas. <laughs> We've seen two examples of stormwater retrofitting, but like any good idea, it started with a plan. The city and the Center for Watershed Protection conducted a thorough investigation to see where there were opportunities to construct retrofits. The plan inventoried and prioritized the best retrofit sites. The two seen today were highly ranked, so they were early candidates for funding and construction. So how can you do this in your community? Here are some tips. One, develop an inventory of possible sites. Two, rank and prioritize the best sites. Three, seek creative ways to fund the project, such as grants, tagging onto existing capital improvement projects, and using volunteers to help with planting and mulching. And four, use signs and education campaigns to help teach how these practices can help clean up streams and waterways. To learn more about stormwater retrofitting and other strategies local communities can use for clean water, click the links on the Center for Watershed Protection homepage and join our mailing list to be notified about future educational webcasts. Share this with your friends and colleagues on Facebook. And make sure to look for upcoming webcasts on ways you can help protect our streams and waterways.